If someone tells you that they are from Pakistan, you have no right to correct them and sit here and try to tell them that they are from Israel. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into a story that stirred up a lot of emotions and raised questions about identity and education. A Palestinian lady recently shared a heartbreaking experience about her 8 year old brother who during a school assignment probably wrote about his homeland, Stein. However, his teacher insisted that Palestine doesn't exist, claiming it's a part of Iraq. This incident has ignited a broader conversation about the complexities of the East Palestine conflict, the impact of such narratives on young minds and the role of education in shaping perspectives. But before we unpack this powerful narrative, make sure you are subscribed and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on our deep dives and competing stories. Now let's explore the Palestinian ladies video and the varied reactions it has sparked from different individuals. It's a journey into understanding, empathy and the importance of education in fostering inclusivity. Stay tuned and let's get started. If someone tells you that they are from Palestine, you have no right to correct them and sit here and try to tell them that they are from Israel. I have an eight-year-old brother that is in the third grade. His teacher had asked them to do an assignment where they write about the country in which they're from. He told her that he's from Palestine and she tells him that Palestine doesn't exist. She says that Palestine's not a real country and she shows him a map and says this is Israel. He didn't question her. He didn't know what else to say. He just wrote Israel and starts looking up things about Israel on his Chromebook. But then he goes home and starts asking us questions because he's confused. Us. He's like, Mama, my teacher's telling me that Palestine doesn't exist, that it's not a country. When he and well sees what's happening on Al Jazeera, when he's well been to every test, and when we've been well made sure that he's learned about our history in a way that he can comprehend. Who are you to impose your political beliefs on an eight-year-old child? As a teacher, it is your job to be sensitive of children in their home situations. If he's telling you he's Palestinian, you can probably bet that he's heard about his family history. So you have no right to tell him that he needs to be writing about his officer. And yes, I am going to speak to her tomorrow because I would love to know if you had a Christian or a Ukrainian child in your classroom, would you allow them to write the country in which they are from for this assignment? And if not, what is the country that you would cherry pick for them to be from? Point blank period, what we're not going to do is sit here and have all these children write about the country in which they're from and to be proud of their cultural identity while you're sending him subconscious messages that he needs to hide who he is, that his existence isn't even fucking real. That further promotes the this agenda and it further promotes the tree. You're sending him subconscious messages that one is more valued than the other, that one is more real than the other. I need to meditate before I see this lady because I cannot. Now that we've set the stage with the Palestinian ladies video, let's delve into the reactions it sparked. The perspectives are diverse, ranging from empathy to frustration. It is crucial to listen to these voices as they reflect the broader dialogue surrounding education, cultural identity, and the impact on young minds. But before we jump into the reactions, take a moment to reflect on the significance of these narratives and their influence on shaping their understanding of the world. All right, let's jump into these thought-provoking responses and see the diverse range of opinions that emerged from this powerful story. And the far-right Christian nationalists or that with casseroles want to be the main ones to talk about indoctrination in our public schools but want to turn a blind eye to the fact that this teacher want to tell a young child where they are or not from and tell them that Palestine doesn't exist and it's the same similar pattern to them wanting to rewrite or erase a history or them wanting to ban a bunch of books that doesn't need to be banned. And before anybody hops on this thing talking about the books with inappropriate content, yes, I'm all for banning books from schools with inappropriate content that it does not need to see. So let's get that established. Or they want to worry about gays and people having access to kids where they're actually not the ones going after kids it's actually this POS teacher that's basically gonna try to brainwash and confuse a child on their origin telling them this be lie about Stein not existing talk about the epitome of the hypocrisy here and obviously we don't need a Google search to know that Stein indeed does exist on the map. So if anything, 
this POS teacher needs to stop the indoctrination of our kids. The free Palestine. You know what's crazy is I have almost an identical story to your brothers. When I was also eight years old and in the third grade, we were assigned a history report. And for this history report, we were allowed to pick any country that we wanted for it. And I still remember this extremely vividly. The teacher handed out everyone an index card and told them to write their name on it and then the name of their country that they were going to be doing. And naturally, everyone decided to just choose the country that they were from for the report. So the Italian kids did Italy, the Chinese kids did China, and me being Palestinian, I chose Palestine. The teacher then collected our index cards and then sent us off for our lunch break. Now I'm assuming that she checked over these index cards during her lunch break because when we returned from lunch, she actually called me over to her desk and handed me back my index card with the word Palestine crossed out on it and told me that I needed to choose a different country. Being that I was only 8 years old, I kind of just looked at her confused and asked why. I told her that this was the country that I was from and that's why I wanted to do it for my project. She then told me that I couldn't do Palestine because it wasn't actually a real country. Once again, because I was only an 8 year old child, I just looked at her confused and with a blank face. See, I didn't know what Israel was, I didn't know about the occupation or any of the wars. My parents never told me about any of these things. Rightfully so, because there's not really any way to explain any of these things to an 8 year old child in a way that they would actually understand. You see, in my mind, I thought that Palestine was just an ordinary country, just like every other country in the world. But because I was a child and didn't know any better, I just listened to the teacher. And instead, I chose Egypt for my project. And what hurts the most is that I didn't know what she was doing was wrong. It wasn't until years later when I actually learned about Palestine, about Israel, and, and educated myself on what was going on, that it finally clicked in my head. I was infuriated. I still am infuriated. And I just, I wish that when I went home that day, I told my mom. Because I know she would have stood down the doors all that next day and gave that teacher a piece of her mind. The part I still just can't wrap my head around is how a teacher, someone that you are supposed to look up to for guidance, could just say something so belittling and demotivating to it. And if this happened to me and your brother, just think how many other Palestinians have shared this same exact experience. The educational system in the West is so Palestinian and it's extremely dangerous. Remind me of the video of the kid um, whose teacher told him that Palestine doesn't exist and showed him a map. And he said, well, pull up a map from 1939. And then he was right. And when he got home, told her his story, her mom asked him why he picked that year. And he was like, I don't know. I knew it was before then, but little Palestinians are so cute and smart. Free, free, free Palestine in our lifetime. In the first perspective, we explore the profound impact of cultural insensitivity in education. The incident involving the eight-year-old Palestinian boy sheds light on the need for educators to be aware of their biases and the potential harm that can be inflicted on minds. This discussion delves into the broader implications of dismissing its cultural identity, especially in a diverse educational environment. By analyzing this perspective, we aim to understand how such incidents can shape a child's perception of self and the others, influencing their worldview from an early age. Let us examine the role of cultural appropriation in the arts and media. We use examples of how imagery, style, and language from different cultures are borrowed and used by dominant groups, often without consent or respect. This discussion explores the ethical and aesthetic issues of such practices, as well as the potential benefits of cultural exchange and appreciation. By evaluating this perspective, we can understand how cultural appropriation can affect the representation and recognition of marginalized groups, impacting their social and economic opportunities. We should should investigate the strategies of cultural sensitivity in the classroom. We suggest ways that educators can foster a positive and inclusive learning environment for students from diverse backgrounds, beliefs, and values. This discussion highlights the importance of research, dialogue, and reflection in addressing cultural differences and conflicts. By applying this perspective, we aim to understand how cultural sensitivity
activity can enhance the academic and personal growth of students, preparing them for a global and multicultural society. Now, the other perspective delves into the systemic issues within educational structures that contribute to the erasure of Palestinian identity. Examining this angle involves considering policies, curriculum choices, and the need for inclusivity. We explore how incidents like these reflect broader challenges within educational systems that may perpetuate biases and contribute to the marginalization of certain communities. By addressing the structural aspects, we aim to foster discussions on necessary reforms for more inclusive and cultural sensitive education. In this perspective, we dive deep at looking at personal experiences of Palestinian students and teachers in the context of education. We listen to their stories of struggle, resilience, and hope as they navigate the barriers and opportunities that shape their educational journeys. This discussion reveals the human impact of the conflict and the inequalities on the lives and aspirations of individuals and communities. By sharing this perspective, we hope to understand how education can be a source of empowerment, identity, and the peace for Palestinian people. We compare and contrast the educational systems and practices of Israel and Palestine. We examine the similarities and differences in terms of curriculum, pedagogy, assessment, and governance. This discussion exposes the challenges and possibilities of collaboration and dialogue between the two sides. By presenting this perspective, we aim to understand how education can be a bridge or a wall for existence and justice. As we delve into this critical perspective, we invite you, our viewers, to engage with us. If you find these insights and discussions valuable, don't forget to show your support, hit the like button, share this video with those who might benefit from these conversations, and subscribe to stay updated on thought-provoking content. Your active participation fuels this meaningful dialogue we strive to foster on this platform let's continue to explore learn and build understanding together Moving on, and as we explore the power of personal narratives and storytelling in shaping our understanding of the world, Teen and Ladies video is not just an isolated incident, but part of a broader narrative. By examining the storytelling element, we are aiming to understand how personal experiences can be powerful tools for social change. Now, let's dive into the world of storytelling, where the magic of narratives meets the realm of social change. In this perspective, we are not just dissecting tales, we are exploring how stories when welded with purpose can be catalysts for positive impact. We will unravel the ethical and aesthetic threads woven into the fabric of storytelling for social change. From the potential benefits to the inherent risks, we are examining the intricate dance between authenticity, accuracy, and representation in narratives. Now let's bring it closer to home, to the very heart of personal narratives. Imagine the power of storytelling in reshaping the experiences of those who have faced bias like the teen and ladies perspective we've explored earlier. In a world where individuals are told they don't belong, stories become a beacon of strength. By sharing tales of resilience and authenticity, we can amplify the voices of the ops. Through storytelling, we hold the pen to rewrite narratives, dismantling prejudices, and fostering a sense of belonging. So let's embark on this journey of stories, where each narrative has the potential to make the world a more inclusive and empathetic place. Together we can be architects of change through the transformative force of storytelling. Now let's dive into the last perspective, where we unravel the pivotal role of teachers in crafting a vibrant tapestry of inclusive learning environments. Picture this, educators as architects of not just academic knowledge, but also creators of spaces where every child feels not only heard, but cherished. We explore the profound impact that these mentors wield, not just in classrooms, but in shaping a broader sense of belonging and cultural appreciation among their students. Shifting the gears, we zoom out to the witness of the global echoes of cultural insensitivity. Within education, this isn't just about one incident. It's a gateway to a broader conversation that ripples through international relations. Join us in connecting the dots as seemingly isolated occurrences fan the flames of wider geopolitical tensions. This exploration invites you to consider how the threads of education, cultural awareness, and global relations are intricately woven together, unraveling a rich tapestry of insights into the far-reaching effects of what may seem like isolated incidents. Today, we delved into a thought-provoking exploration of a Palestinian lady's video, shedding light on her brother's encounter in the classroom. As we broke down the reactions, we witnessed 
makes the powerful narrative unfold, one that resonates with anyone who has faced bias or felt the need to affirm their identity. Through storytelling, we unveil the strength found in shared experiences and the potential for positive change. In our breakdown, we journeyed through various perspectives from emotional impact on the family to the broader implications of cultural insensitivity on a global scale. We aim to provide a comprehensive understanding. Teachers as architects of inclusive spaces play a crucial role shaping not only academic knowledge but also fostering a sense of belonging. Now as we wrap up, remember the power of stories by amplifying voices and sharing narratives. We contribute to a more empathetic and informed world. If you found this exploration enlightening, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Let's continue this dialogue and work together towards a future where every story is heard and valued. Until next time, stay curious.